can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Okay, um, today we're going to be looking at um, the nature, stroke, the effects of God's Word. The nature and effect of God's Word. We know now that um, there are two most difficult life, spiritual life to live. Two most difficult. They are very difficult and that is what we are going to, what we are going to be contending with, striving. You know what it is? It's a life of faith and a life of love. Walking in love and living by faith is a very difficult spiritual exercise. Trying to align your life, trying to align your life with God's word is not a joke. It's not an easy job. And getting people to align into the word of God and all of that is neither an easy job to do. It's a very difficult task. The reason being that, the reason being that from the day you were born, you have lived your life based on your sense knowledge, your senses, all your five senses. That is what you have lived all your life with. Every single thing that you have learned, every single experience you have had in this life, they came through the senses. And unfortunately, God does not depend on your senses in order to deal with you, in order to relate with you, in order to do whatever it has to do with you. It does not depend on your senses. It doesn't depend on the things you have learned in this life. And that is the reason why when you come to God, you are going to, he's going to strip you of every single thing that you think you have learned. If you are going to walk with him. He doesn't deal with you on the basis of your education, on the basis of your exposure, on the basis of your wealth, on the basis of who you know or who you don't know. So that is why it is a very difficult thing. Now, what you are going to be doing, trying to do away with all that you have learned and known about life and all of that, trying to Go do away with it and then follow God because they don't walk in line. They are not in tandem. They are not in the same page. I give you an example. A young man is sick. You are sick or you are broke. You don't have money. You are sick at the point of death. There is hospital and there is drug to take. And you come to God. God tells you by the stripes of Jesus Christ, consider yourself healed. You know what's going to happen to you? You won't want to hear that. Every other person that is around you will be saying that you are out of your mind. Go get tr a treatment. Go get attention. Of, go and get attention from the hospital or doctor and all of that. These are the things that... But he said, is anyone among you sick? What did he say you should do? go to the elders of the church let them pray for you and all of that but if you are sick what do you do you go to the hospital you see you think it is easy you have headache you have stomach whatever and all of that you know what is the next thing the next thing is that you're going to look for drugs and he said that the judge shall live by faith with their faith it is impossible to please god 
living a life of faith is not a joke. If you want to walk with God, God that you don't see. And the Bible says he calls things that are not in existence as though they were. And when he said to Abraham, you are a father of many nations. Abraham was bearing. He did it. His wife was bearing. The man was getting old to add to add salt to the injury. He was 75. The man was getting old. The wife was old. He now came to an old man and said, you are a father of many nations and all of that. Even at a point, he wanted to help God by sleeping with Hagar and gave birth to Ishmael. And God still turned to him and said, this is not what I'm talking about. I say your own child from your own loins shall be the heir of promise. It was a difficult thing. You must understand who God is. You must know how. So that is why if you don't have faith, you can't deal with God. And God cannot deal with you. And what it means is that you are not going to make heaven. Because he said anything that is not of faith is sin. The just shall live by faith. And if any man turn, if any man's soul turn back from the life of faith, he said, my soul does not have pleasure in you. Without faith, you can't please God. There's nothing. Hello. This is a simple reason why you will see a brother or a sister dying of cancer. Dying of cancer. In the presence of God, and nothing will happen. And that person will still die. With all our prayers. Because he said, when you ought to develop your faith life, you failed. There are other things that are more important to us than building our life with God. So that is why a life of faith is a very difficult one. Are you surprised that somebody, a great man of God that is revered and is respected and all of that is talking to you about the second Option two, is it plan B? Does God support plan B? No. He doesn't. So why will a great man of God and all of that that has global influence and all of that stand on the stage and say, talk about plan He say, you go get plan B. This is what he's telling his own people. Why? Because there is war. Is it not? It's because of war. So because of war, you do what? You abandon the flock, abandon your duty posts, just like Peter. It was hot in Jerusalem. There were a massacre of the Christians. When the heat was too much, Peter took off. Plan B. Jesus stood him on the way. He said, where are you going to? They overcame him by the blood. By the word of their testimony. And by their life. See what is happening to those guys. See those big ones. See what they are doing. What has happened? What about what about you and I? What about the people that we are pastoring? You see the ex, you see the kind of work you need to do. There are sometimes when you understand it, eh, you will break down. You will have you you will cry to God. And when I came this evening. It was the lady who was telling when he finished. He finished telling myself, "Oh my God." Tars. I know there are tars amongst the wheat. But then, when you are confronted with that reality, your heart breaks. A Christian and all of that, under this, with all the things we are saying, with all the things we are teaching, with all the level of our strictness and all of that, you still have this. So you can imagine what is going on elsewhere. Mr my brothers and my sisters living a life of this faith thing 
is not a joke. The earlier you tell yourself the truth, the better for you. The earlier the truth, the better. So, we read in Hebrew chapter 4, in verse 12, and he said, For the word of God, it is weak, it is powerful, it is sharper than any two edged sword, or aged sword, whichever one you choose to call it, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What he's saying here is that there is nothing, no power. There is no power that can be used to compare the power of God's word. What is it that you're going to use? Now, let me show you. Go to Hebrew chapter 12, chapter 11, 11 verse 2, 1 and 2. Hebrew 11. For by it, let us obtain a good report. If you want to obtain a good report, then you must have to be a man and a woman of faith. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the walls we are framed by this same word. What is it? Is, think about the whole world, the whole of creation. The only way you can begin to, you know, when, I th when, the, word, when the Bible said that the word of God is quick and powerful, there is nothing in this life that can be compared. You used to compare the power of God's word. There's nothing. And God is his word and his word is God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So when you hear the word of God, you are talking about God. But now let's zero on to the word of God. He said through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. What power, what technology, what system, what kind of technology and people's ingenuity and all of that that will frame, create this word and hold this world. You see the whole of this creature is suspended. This world is suspended by the water. He is floating. This whole creation is floating. He is not, he is not standing on anything. He is on the water. It's the power of the word of God. That's what. Yeah, after the creation, is the word of God that is holding it. So now you begin to ask, so what is it that is as powerful as God's word? There is nothing. The word of God is weak. Is powerful, is sharper than any two edged sword. It pierces. There's nothing that can pierce as much as God's word. Nothing that is powerful. Look at the whole creation. Created the word of God, created it, suspended it. When you you know, you know when you you know when you lift, when you enter plane and all of that, whatever is it, any means that lifts you off from the earth, from the ground. You go up. As you are going up, you know there are things up there. Hello? You know there are things up there. Why are they not falling down? The sun, the moon, the stars, and all those other. There are planets out there. There are Milky Way. There are galaxies. So why are they not falling down? Somebody created them and put them there. And they stood. He created the oceans and all of that. Gave them boundary. They said they should not until today. Somebody is the word. So what, what are you going to start to begin to compare the word of God and all? It's powerful. Even what you see, when the word of God is coming, is the same word, is the same word that created the whole universe and suspended it the way it is still today. Is that same word that is coming out? And so it is quick. It is powerful in the life of everyone. This, as powerful as it is, the same way it is as powerful in your life. But now the one million dollar question is, why is the word of God not that powerful in our life as we hear it, as we receive it? Because if indeed it is that powerful and we are receiving it, you are going to see 
a tremendous change in the life of the one that receives it. Why is it not that powerful? Sometimes we hear the message from the pulpit and also say, wow, and as you are hearing it, you know, it's awesome. And then people will tell you, wow, this is wonderful. Oh, there is one message, somebody preached, man, I listen to that message and listen to it. And they, you know, so many things we say about him. Why is he not translating to? It's the same message, but it has different impact, different results. Why? So, we, look, we read James chapter 1. Verse 21. Let's look at James chapter 1, verse 21. He says, Wherefore lay apart or aside all, not some, all filthiness, all superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. So before the word of God, this engrafted word will be able to save your soul. There are things you must have to do. If you don't do it, that same word, as powerful as it is, as powerful as the word of God is, it depends its impact in the life of the person that receives it is dependent on the attitude towards that word. Paul was writing, he says, that I might not make the cross of Jesus Christ of no effect. As powerful as the cross is, you can rubbish it. But not that you rubbish it, it will have no power. What it means is that it will not have that power in your life. So it is the attitude that you have towards it. To some, it is foolishness. To some people that are receiving it, it is foolishness to them. So that it doesn't make any sense. They can't relate with it. But to some others, it is the power of God in their lives. It depends on the person that is receiving it. It depends on the attitude of the person receiving it. Because, you see, there is nothing else God have told you. Paul said to the Ephesian church, he said, there is only one thing, only one thing that I want to give to you as I go. I won't, I don't know, I won't, I won't be able to meet you again, except when we see in heaven. But until then, I give you something that is going to Make you come to that heaven with me. It is God and his word. Nothing more, nothing else. He's able to save your soul. He's able to keep you. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. That is able to build you up. And then give you your inheritance. The blessings of God. The grace of God. The riches of Christ. Among them that are sanctified. It is in the word of God. That is why he said he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Through the precious promises in the word of God. So that by this we escape the corruption, the sin, the failures, the misery, the sicknesses, the diseases. The disappointments that are in the world. Through the word of God, you escape from all of them. They will not have any impact in your life. It's through the word. So what you do with the word of God is of utmost importance in your life. No wonder Paul said, when I come to you, I don't want to know any other thing apart from the word and him crucified. Jesus is a living word. Psalm 25 verse 8. Psalm 25 verse 8, he says, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Verse 9. The meek, who? The meek, he will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his ways. 
you see the condition upon which you receive the word of God that is able to save you. If you are not the meek type, if you are the one that you always presume that you have known it all or you have arrived, when they talk about, let's look at the word of God and all of that, you keep looking because you already know. Before the pastor will even say it, you have quoted it. You know, that is the attitude that we have in this dispensation. That's why I encourage anybody. If you are coming to church, take your Bible. When they say open, open it. If you read the book of Revelation, he said there is a blessing that comes from reading from this book. That thing is pride, is arrogant. Pride is very subtly. You believe you know it. It's an attitude of the heart. What is it? Because in your heart you'll be saying, what is it that's going to say that I have not? And you see some, when you are, when you, some of them, when you are, the message, the word of God is, uh, you see them, they are either on the phone or they are in the phone chatting, you know, chatting to somebody within the church again, inside the church. That I don't think what he's saying is the right thing or, you know, I don't believe this one. This is actually what the scripture says. That's what they are sending charts in the church. Will the person grow? N O no pride. God will resist them. So when you see people's life going round the circle, round and round, no tangential move. There is a reason for it. There because there's no smoke with their fire. I don't mean the one that we give lip service. You know, you can give lip service. Hey, yeah, I know. It's true. Yes, pastor. Before pastor, he say yes, yes, yes. But deep inside you, no commitment to match. How can we have, for example, how can we have the Holy Spirit inside of Do you know what it means? You know what God did? Do you know what God did to give his Holy Spirit inside of you? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He that is in you is what? Is greater than he that is in the world. But the one that is in the world is still defeating us. He's still messing us up. How come? Because you don't know it at all and we don't believe it. Anything, anything you claim that you know and you are not doing, you don't know it. Anything that you claim that you know, and that thing you know is not working in your life, you don't know it yet. You believe in healing, and you are still sick. You don't believe it. You don't know it. It's not working for you. I'm not talking about the, the tongue in Paul's flesh, the agent of Satan that God allowed. That's it. That's not what we're talking about. You know what? Because some people say, the, after all, Paul, I heard somebody say, after all, Paul, Paul had agents of Satan buffeting him and all of that. He didn't give him cancer. He wasn't suffering from cancer. He wasn't suffering from high blood pressure. He wasn't suffering from any kind of sickness or the other. What he's suffering is uh, the harassment that people give to him in the course of preaching the gospel. When that thing gets into his head and all of that, God will just allow these guys to manhandle him. When they deal with him and all of that, he will come back crying. God will get his attention. He will humble himself again and that. That's what he meant by, not that he had a stroke, and God gave him stroke, or get God gave him cancer, or God gave him migraine, or God broke one of his legs and now he's using clutches. No. So when you are talking about thorn in the flesh, you must know what it means, thorn in the flesh. So you see, if you are not, you see, mercy, all the part of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great, yes. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should, that he shall choose. The one that fears God, God will teach you. You see, so if the word of God is coming, if we are 100 here, it's not going to be effective in the life of all the 100 people 
here. What will determine how effective it will be is the attitude, your response. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is your response, is your attitude of the heart. Now, <clears throat> I want us to deal with something that I actually want to spend a little time. A little time I want to deal with it and deal with it. Is the this subject of faith. The very first effect that the word of God produces. It is called faith. F A I T H. And God has said, please can we read it again? There are things when we see it, you take them as is a matter of life and death. Give me Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. If you don't have faith, you can't please God. If, you, if your heart desire is to please God, then one thing that you must know, you must go for, you must learn it, you must find out. Because the Bible tells us in that verse 2 of that um, Hebrew, he said, by this same faith, men obtain good reports. So without this faith, he said, by, the, by it, the elders obtain a good report, approved of God. So without this faith, you can't please God. It is not difficult. He said it is impossible. Hebrew chapter 10, 38. Now the just shall live by what? By faith. The word live means that who can tell me the meaning or who can try to explain to us the word live L-I-V-E to live to live life every aspect of your existence like give me an example every aspect of your existence family life can you be more specific yes every aspect of your existence you drink water don't you drink that's your your living you eat food by faith you drink water by faith yes you you relationship with people by faith you sleep by faith yes you do which one is expectation you do security by faith is it not is because you say leave means it covers every aspect of your existence which include security work i'm doing i do security work by faith i sell cars by faith i work in my office by faith i sell the drug that i sell by faith you live by faith you breathe by faith you wake up by faith you go to sleep by faith you drink water by faith is that not what it means to live? You will be the, the governor of a state by faith. You rule as a president by faith. Whatever, everything that you do, that is the life of a believer now that you are born again. And he said, the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back from what? From this life of faith, he said, my soul, I don't have pleasure in you. You know, God does not have pleasure in many people. That one that said, plan B, is he living by faith? So what he means is that God, I'm not trying to write anybody down and all of that. I just talk based on what I heard. If you actually want to walk with God, you see that when you read in between, you know that there are so many. That's why Jesus said a lot of things that men approve. They are abomination to God. If you don't sleep by faith, something is wrong. Romans 14, 23, please. And he that doubted is damned. If he does what? If he eats. Because he eateth not of what? So which means if you are eating food and you are eating not of faith, 
you are damned. Because whatsoever is not of faith is what is seen. Whatever is not of faith is seen. How does faith come? We must get this faith, is it not? We need this faith. You preach by faith. You prophesy by faith. According to the measure of faith. You sweep by faith. You clean by faith. Every single thing is a matter of faith. How do we get faith? Romans 10, 17. Can we read it together? So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. True or false? Answer me. Whether it is true or false about the statement that I'm about to make. Faith does not directly from God's word. True or false? From this scripture. From this scripture. Look at the scriptures. Or look at the Bible. Look at it. If you say no, you tell me the reason. If you say no, you keep quiet. If you say, why? Excellent. 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 Faith doesn't directly come. It doesn't jump from God to you. And you, it doesn't happen that way. It's a lie. It's not true. This is the reason why we, this is one reason why we don't have faith. A lot of people, millions, they don't have faith. He said, number one, you see, let me explain to you what happened and how faith produces healing in your body and how faith gives you that breakthrough or whatever it is that you are looking for. See what happens. He said, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what is the first thing that has to be? The process starts with what is not true. No, the process, the first, the word of God first. The very first thing that must be in place is what? Let's come to the word of God. There are different words. There is the word of man. There are the words of the devil. When you talk about the word of man, there is the word of the doctor. There is the word of the politicians. There is the word of your father, the word of the governor, the word of your MD and all of There are so many words everywhere. There are different kinds of words. Just like you have different kinds of voices. He said, but there is this particular one. You must pay attention to this particular. Because not everything is, not even everything in the Bible is the word of God. I hope you know that. Eh? Not everything in the Bible is the word of God. This one is looking at me. Ha, pastor, pastor. I'll give you an example. Job said that it was God that was afflicting him with sicknesses and diseases. That's what he said. Was it God? Was it God? Who was doing that? It was Satan. It wasn't God. But you include it in, in the word of God. Brethren, because that's what you use in your prayer point. Brethren, remember the word of God? God was afflicting Job, but Job endured it. Let us pray that we will have that endurance when you are off point. You are praying nonsense. You are praying against God. God will be angry with you doing that. And when you are praying it, you are shouting on top of your voice. Is it God's? You are praying lies. You are lying against God. There are many of them I don't want to. I'm going to tell you what the word of God is. So first of all, it has to be the word. If it is not the word of God, it is not the word of God. If it is not Panadol, it is not, that, it is not the same as Panadol. It must be God's word. You see, because he said the word of God is quick. The word is powerful. It is. But what we are doing is that we are quoting the word of men and another word and things that people are saying. 
because God, because when, when, because David said, when, when the, when the Amalekites were coming and all of that, and David said to God, God, do I pursue and do I whatever? And God said, pursue and overtake. So let us pursue, let us pray. God didn't say so. So, number one is that the word of God must have been in place. You have to make sure it is. If you do this, let me, I want you to, I want you to put it into practice. I think we are going to be, we are going to start taking testimonies. You want to put it, put it into practice. Practice it and see whether it is true or not. Because it is when you do the right thing, when you hear it and you believe it and you do it, you will see the result. You give the testimony. Your faith and your belief and your confidence and all of that rises from... And then you do another one. The thing happens again. It rises. Faith works. It grows. And it grows through obedience. Obedience to the faith. In the word of God, our major problem is that we don't be, we are not able to decipher between the word of God and the word of man. So most of our prayers, most of the prayers we pray are not God's word. And so when we do that, we go back again expecting to see results. You can't see no result, nothing. That's why you see so many prayers and little or no answer. When you hear the word of God in the Bible, thus says the Lord. Uh -huh. And again, when God says to Abraham, give me thy son, your only son, that one that you love, hmm? you use it to pray. Is it not what we do? Are you Abraham? Did he tell you? Did he tell you? Did he? No. He didn't tell you. Moses, take off the sandals from your feet. For the land under which you stand is what? Is holy. Who was he talking to? Are you Moses? Then take off your sandal. You start walking on barefoot. Is that God's word? The Bible says precious promises he has given to us. That we might through them escape. The promises of God are yea, and they are amen. In other words, they are irrevocable. You can't stand on the word of God and go down. It is practically impossible. Jesus, that is why he said in Isaiah 26, 16, he said, I lay in Zion a foundation, a tried foundation. He said, who that standed on that foundation, you will not make it. You will not be disappointed. You will not fall. You will not go down. This is God's word. That same word that is holding the whole creation in place. By faith, we understood that the whole world was framed by the word of God. And they are holding in the space. The word of God is holding it. If you stand on that word of God, you will never go down. We are talking about in this land, men who know God. Then we move to the second one. You know, we are talking about how to lay hold on faith. The first thing you are going to lay hold on is the word of God. Can you give me an example of God's word? Okay, I will come there. Let me not. The second one is hearing. God's word. You see, you, must, you see the word of God? You see that word? You must hear it. That's why you have these ears. That's actually the major reason why God gave you ears. You must hear the word of God. If you don't hear it, if you have the word of God and you don't hear it, it will not produce faith. It is word of, is the word of God plus hearing is equal to what? Faith. Word of God plus hearing produces faith. If you have the word of God and you are not hearing the word of God, you are not listening to the word of God. You are not paying attention to the word of God. Faith that you need cannot come. 
hearing is a sincere desire of the heart to understand what he said so that you can make commitment to doing it is a sincere desire that desire is not in the heart of many people they don't desire they are not interested in here they get distracted that is why when satan wants to finish you as little as it is when Satan wants to finish, you know who, when you want to know who Satan is after, is that man when the word of God is about to start, or when they worship, when the service is starting, or when the worship service and all of that start, you will see them. You will see them, they are walking up and down, they walk out, you see some of them, they are on the road and the corridor, they are walking up and down. You go to the back again, you see those people, they have been cut off. He said in hearing, they will not hear. They will look, they will not see. They will listen, they will not have understanding. Less, they will be converted and be healed. That is the work of Satan. You see, when you talk about Satan, when we talk about Satan, Satan is, he capitalizes in breaking God's word. It is for those of them that are breaking God's word that he's looking for. The Bible said that he's prowling like a roaring lion. He prowls, looking for. It's not everybody. If it is everybody, he won't be looking for. He will just be pouncing on anyone around him. But he's looking for. Who are those of them that he's looking for? These ones that do not pay. Even those of them that are in the church that are not paying attention to the word of God. That is why he said, when the word of God comes and you do not understand, he said the wicked one comes and takes it away. But you see those of them who pay diligent attention to the hearing of God's word. They are the ones that have that faith. That's when that faith is elicited. You hear the word. Now the question again is, what is being preached to you? Is it the word of God? You know, when we talk about building on the foundation, you build with gold, with silver, with precious stone, with hay, with wood and with stubble, straw, stubble, hay, wood, precious stone, silver, gold. Choose which one you want to. The one that produces the faith of God is the one that's built with gold. That is why someone says, I'm waiting on God to show me the church that I'm going to go to. Hmm? How do you know? There are two ways God speaks. He can speak to you expressly by his spirit. As many as are led by the spirit. He can also speak to you in his word. So I know God says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He leads me beside he make me lie down on green pasture where his word is being preached. So when I come to a church, see how I know. I don't want, I, I have not heard my, my son, my son. I'm speaking to you. Thou art Fred. Thou shall begin to worship it in this. When I come to church, I watch. I know to know whether what you are saying is God's word. When it is God's word, I listen to you the first time, I listen to the second time, I listen to the, oh, this is where God wants me to be. Because that is where I hear the word that is able to build me and offer me my inheritance among them that are sanctified. I don't need to go and fast and pray. It's when I'm not clear with the word of God and all of that. When I don't have clarity from God's word, I go to pray. And when you go to pray, he will bring you back. One of the best way, the greatest way God has spoken to me over time, ever since I got born again till today, is through the pages of the Bible. And most especially, especially when I meditate on the word of God, when I reflect on the word of God and all of that, 
he comes like lightning. That's how I know. And I prefer that one. Then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit said, the word of God is there. You give attention to it. You hear it. As you are hearing the word, that is why he said, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So the word of God must be heard. When you hear the word of God, it produces faith that you need to do the impossible. It's a spirit. The question now is, am I listening to the word, the word of God? If you listen, if you pray the word of God, your life will change. Things will happen. That situation will change. It may not, another thing I'm coming, I'm coming there. Another thing about, you don't expect that change over the night. I'm going to explain to you, tell you why. Now, see, the time between the hearing of the word of God. Hmm? This is the word of God. This is the hearing. The time between the hearing of the word of God and the faith. There is a time. It is within that time that you brood. You wait. You stay. There is an appreciable amount of time that is required to produce that faith. There is an appreciable amount of time required to produce that. It's not just automatic. Word of God must come. You must hear it. Then between the hearing and the release of that faith, there is a time lag. That time is what a lot of people don't have. They don't give attention to it. You see where the problem, so that you can diagnose, you know when you go to a hospital, somebody is sick, the doctor will do all the diagnosis because until you're able to make a proper diagnosis, you don't have solution to that person's problem. Because we have looked at this word and sometimes we say, well, it's not just coming to, to declare the word of God. The word of God says and all of that. You can be saying it with an empty, no life in it. So, what is that appreciable time that is needed when I hear the word? When the word of God comes, I hear it. When I hear it, I brood on it. I allow it to do that work inside. As a matter of fact, in the hearing of the word of God, you know you hear it with your ears, is it not? It travels. There is a journey the word of God makes. There is a journey. He is traveling. He is tra you know where he's going to? He's going into your spirit to enter your spirit man. And you know in the mind there are so many distractions and all of that that can slow down the speed or the walk or the journey. It can slow them down. As a result of a lot of distraction and noises and commitment and a whole lot of things. So immediately you finish, the word of God comes and you hear it and after hearing it in the church service, for example, on a Sunday, you know, other activities will come in and the whole lot of things, you talk, you joke, you do or whatever. And then by the time you get home, you have even forgotten. That journey was not made. The word didn't make that journey to your spirit. Because if he enters, because the journey of that word is to find his root in your spirit, man. Because the word of God is spirit. is spirit to spirit. He must have access to your spirit. That period of time, people don't give attention to it. Let me show you something. In Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. The seed that fell on tiny ground. Matthew 20, 13, 20, 21. We can go back to 18. Matthew 13. But he that receiveth seed into the stony ground, the same is he who heareth the word of God, and on with what? Joy receiveth it. Yet had he not root in himself, why didn't he have root? Root where? The word of God did not have root. Root where? In the spirit. It didn't go down to the spirit. It just stayed on the head. The mind. This is why they didn't know they get results. 
You know they get time. Stay. Close your eyes. Reflect on what you have heard. Think. Because that is what you need. See, eh? if you have a practice of this, you do it. That's why Jesus said, <laughs> if you abide in me and my word is resident in you, where? Where in you? In your head. Is in your spirit. So it is not just enough for the word of God to be there, but to hear it. And after hearing it, you give it that time for it to grow and have root inside of you. And that is that period of time is what a lot of us don't. Some of us are talkative. They talk and 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 talk. And it's gone. They don't know how to. The Bible say, study to be what? Quiet. Find it for me, please. Study to be quiet. What is it? Is it for you to be quiet? You know, there is no noise. I'm not making any noise. Everywhere is quiet. He's not talking about natural quiet, physical quietness. What he's talking about, still, be still inside of you. 1 Thessalonians 4.11 1 Thessalonians 4.11 And that you study to be what? Quiet. And to do your own business. Calm down. Away, away from the noise. Alone with you. Away, away, away. From the noise, study to be quiet so that you can be alone with him. Be still in the presence of God. Close eyes. Sometimes you might not close eyes, you just be looking into this. Think deep concerning what you have heard, concerning what you have read from God's word. As you are doing that, that word is a spirit, is making journey into your spirit man. And then you stay a while, it has access into your spirit. Once it enters your spirit, it is done. <laughs> Once it enters your spirit man, it is sealed. When you want to speak, when you want to speak, it is from there, out of the abundance of the heart, it comes out. When that kind of word comes, let me tell you, if that word me touches this thing, if it touches this thing, it will become that thing that you said it will be. You don't understand what you say. Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, it's not just empty confessional. You know this thing we do because the word doesn't have root in us. Because you know, because we are living in a, a fast-paced society, this generation, very fast. They don't have time for anything. You come to church, time, 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 time is whatever. You off, you go. You would start running up and down. They calibrate everything. Message is um, praise, prayer is five minutes. Um, um, praise worship. Praise is uh, seven minutes. Worship is six minutes. And then word is 17 and a half minutes. Then announcement, three minutes. Offering. Then FCU. You know, you calibrate it. Time. The days are gone in those days. When you finish preaching, when the message finishes, you see people they go to one and they are brooding. They are praying that thing in. They are praying, oh God, that I may know you. Lord, you know flesh and blood do not put this thing in me. I ask you, help me. Let it have root in my side, my heart. You pray in the spirit. You pray in your understanding. Even if you do that thing for 10, 20, 30 minutes, if you see when, when the time comes, because when you are doing it initially, you will not see the result. Brothers and sisters, this is what is defeating the body of Christ. 
the prayer you see that prayer you see there are so many prayer that doesn't have one single atom of faith in it there are fasting that do not have one atom of faith inside it there are many prayer that doesn't even have not one single and he say anything that is not of faith my soul does not have pleasure in it so we offer prayer nothing lack of faith it is faith is God's word so if you want to complete the full process now it is what who can give me the full download the process the word hearing meditation meditation and then faith and then out of that faith what is the next one you speak you speak that's when you speak when you speak your word becomes like the word of god you can now say that is on this particular spot now you can say thus says the lord that's when you can say thus says the lord it will come to pass god hasn't said though god didn't say but here when you get to this place this point you can say thus says the lord <laughs> it will come to pass whosoever shall say to this mountain Give it to me, Mark 11, 23. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, I don't know what that mountain is. It can be mountain of finances. It can be mountain of uh, sickness. It can be mountain of disease. It can be mountain of uh, marriage or whatever it is called. Problem. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and... And what? Where does doubt come from? It's from here. Where are you speaking from? From the spirit. He has bypassed you. Your mind can be, can be busy do, doing nonsense and all of that. The spirit is speaking. Over, over, override it. It has happened to me. can stand in front of someone who has cancer. My mind is telling me all the what I hear inside of me saying you are healed i will ignore the mind when i finish i will go that word will come to pass it is called the word of god the problem is that we are not bringing it that's a problem give me isaiah 55 verse 11 but hold on okay Okay, since you have. Okay, say, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Because God calls things that be not as though they were. And I see a blind man and say you are healed. I see a lame man and say you are healed. He called things that be not as though they were. You are healed. Is the word of God that is coming. Is the word of God that you are speaking now. You are not speaking the word of You are not speaking from your mind. Is, no, that's what is called revelation. It comes like a rema. They that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Exploits is by faith. Men who through faith subdue kingdoms. King Nebuchadnezzar, may you live forever. You know, you can go out and quote it. He can uh, have a... The Bible says, according to Nebuchadnezzar, may you live forever. I will not be careful to answer you in this matter. When you finish, they will slap you. That's not the word of God. <laughs> Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth when you are speaking this way now, it is the, there is there is no difference between you and God. I told you and said it several times, many times. It was one of those days I was in the Enugu State, 
a new heaven. I think they called that place Upper Chime. It was in the night like this. I was taking a street walk. I was praying. I heard a voice from my spirit. Anytime you quote my word, you quote me. I bring, you bring me into that situation. I heard it. I turned around to see whether someone was around. Heard what I was saying. Was said to me. How do you bring the word of God into a part? Is it by quoting it? Is it by reading it or confessing it? I once read a book that said, if you take the word of God and confess it about 1,000 times, mm -mm, mm -mm, it doesn't work that way. When that word of God has journeyed into your spirit, you become like God. You say it, it will come to pass. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Because the desire of every man, every woman here in this place, if you have faith, you know the kind of mountains you will move. Hello? You know if you have faith, if you have that faith now, you know what will happen to you? You know what you can do with that faith. You know what you can do with faith when it comes. I know I'm talking about faith of man. The faith, the faith, God kind of faith. Now let's look at. There are so many things that we call faith today that are not faith. That has nothing to do with faith. You know when you say I'm believing God for a car. Believing God for a house. Believing God for the fruit of the womb. And believing God. You know, those things are not God's word. They are not faith. There is no faith in it. There is no word of God at all. What is, uh, there is what is called word of God found in the promises of God. The things that God has said that he will do, he will do it. That is what is called God's word. The promises of God, the ones that he said, Find out. First Chronicles 17.23 Let me show you something. First Chronicles 17.23 Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever and do so as thou hast done what? Did God say so? He said it to who? To his servant. He made a promise to him. So he's putting him on the line. You said it. He said it to him. This is what is called Bible faith. This is what is called scriptural faith. On the basis of what God said. On the basis of what God promised. So you see, you cannot have faith. If you don't go to find out from the word of God. If you don't study that's the reason he says, study to show yourself approved. A lot of people, they don't study the word of God. They don't. And that young man that says he doesn't study the word of God, he doesn't read the Bible again. Because he hears from the Spirit. Let me show you another. There are many of them. Give me Luke chapter 138. Luke chapter 138. And Mary said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me, According to what did the word say that he said that be it unto him? You will conceive the power from on high will overshadow you and you conceive and be for that's God's word. Do it. <laughs> did he do it? The one of uh, First Corinthians um, Chronicles 17 to did he do it in the life of David? Did he do it? Let's look at another one. Romans chapter 4, 23. Romans 4, 23. No, go to 18, 18, 18. How again so believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations? According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet staggered not at the promise of God, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully what persuaded that what happened? Did he make promise to him? What was the promise? 
Did the son come? Was he the father of many nations? Was the families of the earth blessed through him? Every promise that God made to him came to pass. That's what is called Bible faith. That's what is called the word of God. Any other thing, hold on to God's word. If you, if you are not sure, find out. I love to follow a man like Kenneth Hagin. For 30 years, he said for 30 years he has followed and served God. Not one prayer point has failed. One prayer, he said he didn't make any one prayer that didn't get answer. That's the kind of person I want to listen to and I follow. And he told us why and how. It's on the basis of the word of God. Show me we are going to find out how you find the word of God for yourself when we come to understanding how to study the word of God and how to pray. That's where all these things are made. Because a lot of, you know, you know, you know the problem, eh? we assume in the, you know, one mistake that I made is that when we stay, we assume we are, we are talking to mature people who are, so we find their levels, to stay on their levels. And then, not knowing that there are so many who are still feeding on milk. And even those of them will claim to be mature and all of that, they have faulty foundations. Their foundation is shaky. They don't even know. You know the reason why fear and doubt and unbelief and double-mindedness and all of that is because the foundation is not sure. Because we don't know the fact. If you know the fact, if you know who Jesus Christ is, sometimes you don't even have to understand it. Whether you understand it or not, but when you understand, when you know him, you can bet your life on him. Doubt and fear and double mind and all of that will vanish. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. How many of you remembered Peter when Jesus said to him, Let out your net for a catch? You remember Jesus, Luke chapter 5, verses 4, 5, and 6. He let out his net. What if he had let out his net without this Jesus saying it? He won't have any car. It's on the basis of the word. It's on the basis of the word. You can't obey the word of God. It can't. You see, you see, when you begin to study the word of God, you hear the word of God, you listen to the word of God, you meditate, it nullifies, it eradicates fear and doubt and unbelief. It gets to a point where your life and your mind and your spirit, soul and body does not, they don't accept anything negative or contrary. When it comes to you, your whole body system reacts. You can't hear anything unbelief. And again, you have to be careful because if you want to walk in the path of righteousness and path of faith with God, you cannot be hearing anything. You cannot be listening to CNN and all those things and all of that and expect to have faith. You cannot be listening to, you know, you know um, uh, the way there is a, a, a new var uh, how do they, variant of... Um, of uh, COVID-19 and uh, this other one is it, like this and that uh, is like that one. If you pay attention to it, your faith will go. Take heed what you hear. You don't give attention to those things. To hell with them. They can stay there in their world and be discussing all of that. My Bible tells me in the book of Azaf, it says, whose report do you believe? Which report are you believe? You have to believe. You can't be hearing this and hearing here. If your eye is single, your whole body be full of light. But if your eye is divided, is evil. You hear doctor say this one. Uh, the lawyer say this one. Uh, the bishop say this one. Uh, when you finish here, that's where you see people who jump from one church to another church to another church. They hear, uh, when they come to the church, they say, you have to be sowing seed though. If you don't sow seed, your life is finished. They carry that one, put inside their heart. They come to the other one. He say, hey, his holiness, so and all of that. Eh, it's no more so easy, his holiness now. Okay, so let's start. You come to the another one. You hear his love, oh, it's not anything about 
is life is not about any except love. Eh? If it is love, so what am I doing again? So let's. You go to another one, they say, ah, if you want to make it, you have to serve. Eh? So it's no more service, it's no more love again, it's no more confusion. Confusion. That's why the Bible says that God plants the solitary in family. He puts you. He makes you lie down on green pasture. He leads you beside no troubled water where you can drink water and he restores your soul for his name's sake. He's God. The problem is that we have a lot of lazy believers, Christians. We don't pay attention. We are so busy. We don't have time. Let me tell you, if you actually bring out one full hour in a day and give attention to the word of God, you study it and meditate on it and stay on it. Just give it one hour. Okay, maybe one hour is too much for a lot of people. Don't start. You know, faith is a walk. You don't fly. You don't run. You don't jump. You can start 10 minutes. From 10 minutes to 15, to 20, to 30. You keep growing. Be careful. That is why you can understand Joshua 1.8. Let this law, the book of the law, not depart from your mouth. He say, you shall meditate. Before the meditation, the word will have to come. You have to read it or study it. Know it and understand it. Then the meditation. When the meditation takes place, it says so that you will be careful to observe and to do. Which means there is a connection between meditation and obedience. You know, when that word, when meditation, I told you that that meditation is a period of time. There is a journey the spirit of that word is making. Once it gets into your spirit, man, it grabs it. You obey God by default. You know what is default? You obey God by default, not by struggles. It's him that is at work in you, both to will and to do. That is, you begin to obey God by default. You begin to love God by default. Not because somebody pushed you or pressed you. Meditation. But meditating on the world. You say, let it let the not depart from your mouth. The same thing when it comes to healing. You know, okay, I think I would. I can tidy up this one. There are two ways a healing comes. There are two ways deliverance comes. One, by the finger of God. That is, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That one is like bulldozer. When the Holy Ghost comes, he bulldozes. You know where the bulldozer walked in a field? Have you seen a bulldozer walk in a field? Where there are big trees and trunks that have fell everywhere and heavy gigantic stones and all of that and that bulldozer enters he will bulldoze everything level the whole place clear it bring a level ground, ground everywhere if you look at the expanse from point A to point B the thing that is the power of the Holy Spirit and he will leave no stone unturned he will clean up your life however you need sustenance. That's why he said the yoke is broken because of the reason of the anointing. So the power of the Holy Spirit comes and does all that. That's one way. Just like they were accusing Jesus Christ. He said that you are casting out devil by Beelzebub. He says, sure. Don't you know that the kingdom that is divided is against itself cannot stand? If I am casting out, if I am Beelzebub, if I'm working for Beelzebub, and I'm casting out devil, and the journey and the business of Beelzebub is to oppress people and to destroy people's life. And I'm delivering the people, it means the kingdom is divided. So you are not in the truth. He said, But if I cast out devil <laughs> by the finger of God, <laughs> he said, The kingdom of God has come. You see, you can cast out devil by the finger. There is another way you can deliver. 
you shall know the truth. The truth of his word, he makes you free as you behold him with an open face. So you see, if you cast out devil, Jesus said, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he said, those demons, those devils, they are disembodied spirits. They don't have body. And they are not allowed to stay on this side of life. You must have body, flesh and blood. So they will be very desperate. That is the reason why when those demons ask Jesus, they say, have you come before our time to destroy us and all of that? I say, please leave us. Or if you must destroy, or if you must do this, Lord, if you are going to do this, do us a favor. Jesus says, what? He said, send us to these pigs. They know what they want to do. They know those demons, they know what they wanted to do. Because they know that if you stay in the pigs, their life is short-lived. He says, send us into the pigs. And when they send them, when he sent them into the pigs, those peace enter, they say, we are going, let's, let's go and stay inside the water. And all of them got inside the water. You know, there are spirits that live in the water. And they all went there. And they are drowned. They stayed there. Jesus said, when you cast out spirit, evil spirit from people, there are people who have evil spirit. And you shouldn't be ashamed or whatever. A lot of people, a lot of Christians have demons inside them, demonic operations and all of that. But... I, I won't want to. Be, I won't. I won't be able to do justice to that. It's sp evil spirit, demons, devil, evil spirit cannot assess your spirit, man. But they can stay in your soul. You know, there's a difference between the soul and the spirit. I was telling you. Okay, in the last Berea Academy, I think it was on Saturday. I was showing you the difference between the spirit, soul, and body. The one that is saved is what. The spirit man. That's why he said, I will remove the old heart and give you a new heart and put my new spirit in it. And I'll put my Holy Spirit in it. inside the heart. That the spirit man is the, the, the spirit man at the heart is the fortress of the Holy Spirit. Nothing can enter there. But the mind is not, the soul is not saved. That's why he said to your soul, he said, What you did to your soul, to your soul, he said, Renew your mind with the word of God. Do not conform to this, but be ye transformed by renewing your mind. The mind needs to be renewed. And what is this said to do to your body? Present your body a living sacrifice. In other words, make sure you discipline your body. Bring your body under control. Put it under control. That's what you do to the body. To the mind or to the soul, you say renew it. To your spirit, feed it with, in what, with, with the word of God. So when you now drive the evil spirit out of that person's life from the soul of that person. Sometimes they stick to the body of that. That is why sometimes you see somebody that has a wound on the body or whatever sickness you have on your body. You pray, you pray, you pray and all of that and command healing and stuff like that. At the end of the day, that problem persists. You know what it means? There is a demon that is there. That demon needs to be cast out. Haven't you seen people who have wounds, either in the body or any part of the body, you with every time you are treating it, you give all the injection and give all the medication and all of that, the wound is there. Haven't you seen them? There are many of them. There are demons there. If you cast out that demon, within a period of one week or whatever, that thing will heal. So he says, when you, because these spirits are disembodies, they are looking for body to possess, to occupy, to live in. If you cast it, please can you give it to me? When you cast out devil, Matthew 12, 43, please. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man and he goes through dry places, seeking what? Rest and finds none. Dry places. He's looking for where to inhabit. You've cast him out of that person's body. He must possess another person. It must, that spirit that you cast out, it must live in another person. It must find the expression in another person's body. So when he goes around the dry places and he finds it, then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. What does he mean empty, swept and put in order? What does he mean? 
No word of God stays. You get somebody here. That is the problem we have with some of all. You know, people who are interested in healing, healing. They will just come collect healing and all, or collect the miracles, and then they take off. They think they are smart. Oh God. They think they are very smart. These are the words of Jesus Christ. I'm not the one. He's the one that is telling us what is happening because he's been there. That's where he is in that realm. That he's explaining to us what is going on so that we can be, if you have this knowledge and all of that and you are still being, it means that you, the person is the greatest fool that had ever lived. And then he said, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds his empty swept and put in order. Verse 45. He said, then he goes and takes with him, how many? Seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall he be. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. This wicked generation. So shall it be. This is what is going on. So the condition of that person becomes worse. You try and cast out that devil nowhere. You try everything. You remember that one that Jesus said, how many of you said they were legions? You know what had happened? Legion is how many? In your whatever, the legion, it says about 6,000 demons are living inside. 6,000 demons are living inside the human being. 6,000 demons have their place inside. Cast that devil. Goes about looking for where to. He doesn't find one. He will come back. No word. No worship. No fellowship. No whatever. Nothing. The word of God is not abiding in you. He's empty. He doesn't want to lose that accommodation again. He will fortify it. So see about healing. You know I was telling you yesterday. Sickness. They come as a result of what? As a result of what? It's sin that brings him. <clears throat> no matter how you want to describe it, no matter the kind of uh, polished, you know, word or we want to use and define it and explain it in a modern language, it is sin that brought it. That thing is demon. You know that young man that Jesus Christ healed? He said, go and sin or else. Worst things will come over you, will come upon you. Go and sin. So it was sickness that brought this. There are some sicknesses, there are some conditions that are not, because that young man that was born blind, they asked Jesus, who is the one that sinned, the mother or the father? He said, none of the above. He said, this one was just so that the power of God will be made manifest. There are certain situations like that God allowed to show his power. Just like he created Pharaoh. Just like I read for you in Ephesians chapter 3. The reason for the church, one of the reasons for the church is to show, is to show the principalities and power, the manifold wisdom of God. He passed through the church to teach them. But when it is that case, it is, it is not a question of you will know. And God will come. Because if God is the one that made it happen, he will come, he will create circumstances and he will come and will deal with it. But in absence of that, if you, if you see everything that is not, that is sicknesses and diseases, including coronavirus, keep yourself clean. He won't come to you. Stay in fellowship with God and with the brethren, not in isolation. You can be saying holy, holy, holy and all of that. And you break God's word but not, by not maintaining the assembling of the brethren as it is in the manner of some. You single yourself, you become vulnerable because you are still breaking God's word. So you see what he said in Psalm 107. He said, fools, because of their transgression. Psalm 107 verse 17. He said, fools, because of their what? Transgression and because of their iniquities. We are what? Afflicted. Sin brings affliction of the devil. Now watch. 18. Their soul abhorred all manner of food. They can't eat. There's nothing they can't eat. They can't drink. Nothing. Because they of the affliction. 
And they drew near to the gates of death. They are just about to die because of their sin. Iniquity have brought them thus far. They will have done a great deal of work in their hearts, in their body. And now verse 19 says, Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Verse 20, he sent, how did he do it? He sent his word, and his word does what? How does God heal? By sending his word. Even if the Holy Ghost is going to heal, even if it's going to be by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have to hear the word of God. Go check all the miracles of Jesus Christ. Read the accounts of Jesus Christ. He said he will teach and then he will heal. He will preach and then he will heal. And when he's preaching or teaching and you are not hearing, the word will not heal you because it is through the word. The Holy Spirit also walks through the word. You see this thing about hearing the word of God and hearing the word of God. There is no, there is no alternative, no shortcut. And there is no amount of time you say you have heard the word of God and not. Because there are levels of faith and depths. Depending on what God wants to do with you. And anything at all that God wants to do with you. There are dimensions of that thing. Everyone is God's workmanship. The Bible said that we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ unto good works. Which God ordained from the foundation of the earth that we should walk in it. Every man, every woman is a potential instrument in the hand of God. And God is not going to use you to do light things. Deep heavy things. So the more you know him, the more you grow in the faith and the trust in him and all of that, the more the capacity of what he wants to do with you. So he sent his word. It is the word that he sent that heals. So before you pronounce that word in the life of that person, be healed in Jesus' name. That person must have done what? That is the reason why when we stand like this preaching or teaching, as you are doing that, you will know somebody who has faith, whose the journey of the spirit of faith has entered the spirit man. You will see it. It's, it's written. You will see it in the eyes of that. You will see it. That's why you will see Jesus Christ he will preach in, and he said to this man, stretch forth your hand. Because that guy, he had the spirit of faith that had caught up with him. He will speak. You will know. He says, stretch forth your hand. And the man will stretch it forth. He will do it. The man, the, the, the lame man at the gate called beautiful. He was begging arms. When John, Peter came and saw him, he said, look on us. He didn't, they didn't just come and say and see him, say, look or not. They had preached. They had spoken to the word of God to him. Because you can't just come to somebody and you are walking like this. He said, look on us. And then he's saying in the name of Jesus. He does the word will have to go first. Watch Jesus Christ's pattern. So when he was when they were speaking the word of God to him, they found out that this man, his mind and everything was open. And he, he, he had faith. That thing had done it. He said, Look on us, and he expecting to receive something. He said, In the name of Jesus Christ. Go save I have I not. Such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Finally, the guy got up. Faith. But you can't find it in this present generation where your message is going on. You see them there. Now, he is, what he's texting on the, don't worry, pastor is preaching. He will soon close. I don't know, you know, I thought he was going to close by whatever. If you look at the time, man, I don't know, really know. Me, I'm tired. Is what he's sending to the, and the guy has issues. And as a matter of fact, if there are those of them that have more problems than any other person that are the one that are misbehaving big time. Amen.